Hello, my friend. Welcome to today's session in epidemiology. So today I'm going to um, revise the epidemiologic model of disease. Okay. So so we have the S N I S stands for the fashion the fashion of population that is I stands for the fashion of the of the population that is that are infected at any point in time and I stands for the fashion of those that are so the number of people that are that are being uh recovered. Okay. So for us to understand this we need to understand the Whenever there's an outbreak, you will see that the number of cases will rise, right, and then reach the apex, okay, and then starts falling, okay. So what happens here at the peak? What happens here is that the number of those that are susceptible to the disease becomes equal. The number of those that are immune, that is those that are immune or those that have recovered from the disease. So that so that means that the virus of the of the bacteria uh, the virus now does not have any other host to infect. Okay. So at this particular point, the virus no longer infects people. So you will see that the cases starts going down and people starts recovering. Okay, so that's what happens at the peak. Okay, so this is week one, and this is week seven. So this is the number of cases. So it will rise, 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 rise. And remember, as you as people are doing the recovery, recovering. So at a particular point, the virus will not be normal. Infect because they have been immunized. Either either that, that they have received vaccine, or uh, they have been isolated, so the virus can no longer multiply, and then it starts coming down. So this is what happens of the epidemic, right? So having understood this, we need to understand the uh, some basic equations in epidemiology model, right? So how do we know? The uh, fraction of people that are that the the rate the rate infection okay one person. The rate at which someone that is infected can transmit that uh, infection to the next person is given the formula D S over N. Okay, then times I. So this is the formula for. Sorry, not times I now. For one person to infect, transmit the infection to another, one person will transmit the infection to this number of persons. Alright? So now our B is what? The, the rate of transmission. The rate of the rate of of transmission. The rate of transmission of infection through contact. So that is what our B means. The contact rate, the rate at which the person that is infected, that's the index case. The index case is the first person that is that the disease. The rate at which he transmits it is given by the by the letter B. Alright, 
Now, our S is the number of people that are susceptible to the disease. And then our N is what the total population. That is our N. So for one person, this is a formula. So um, I want you to memorize these formulas and view this video will be done. So for one person, this is a formula. All right. B S over N. Now, but for what to do the number so this is the B S number of cases to be affected by one person. All right. So if if we want to get the total number of people that will be infected by all infected persons, then all we need to do is to multiply the number of people that are infected. Let's multiply this by i. All right. So that gives us the second equation. So the second equation is total number of persons. That will be infected will be given we will be given by B S over N times I. Okay, so that means for the whole population, how many people will be infected? If you are asked to calculate how many people will be infected, this is the formula. You just take the same B as the N times it by the total number of infected persons. So our I stands for the total number of infected persons. Our N stands for the total population. Our S stands for the total number of persons that are susceptible at that time. And then our B is the rate of what? Contact. Our B is the rate of contact with infected persons. So this is the main formula. The number of persons that will be the whole population. Okay, so if you if, if you, are, you are giving something and then you put in the formula, you will be able to tell you how many people that will be what be infected by the whole by how many people how many people will be uh, infected if this number of persons are affected here. All right. So total number of infected by by iron infected all other cases in the population. So the total number of persons that will be infected by anybody that has the disease in the community is given by this formula. Okay. Now, our I is those that have the infection currently. Okay. Our B is our is the contact rate. The rate at which the those that are infected contact others. All right. Our S is what the number of those that are susceptible to the virus or to the infection, and then our N is for the total population. Okay, now so now that we will now do things. So remember we have Those all cases means those that have the disease. All right. So now the next 
kupenda Now, the reproductive process may tell us tell us that it tells us the number of number of persons. Okay, and the number of persons an index takes can infect. In a closed population, assuming that everyone is susceptible to the disease. So, how uh, do oh, tells us, okay, the rate. It tells us the reproductive is called the reproductive number. So the reproductive number tells us the it, it tells us the um the rate at which a single person that is that's those that contact the uh infection will spread that infection to other members of the population. Now the assumption here for RO is that every member of the, every member of the population is susceptible to the virus that is the assumption all right so it is assuming that there is no bet that's like is assuming that the birth rate and the death rate are constant you see that so is not is not giving consideration to that maybe migration um um people are getting uh, giving birth more people are dying no it doesn't consider that it is assuming that the birth rate and the death rates are all constant, and then that everybody is 100% susceptible. So, if you want to know the rate at which the, the infection is moving from, from the, the first person that got it onto others, assuming that everybody is 100% susceptible, then that is our RO. Alright? Now, and this our RO, our RO is given by the formula B over beta over gamma now we have come across this beta so i told you that this beta is the contact rate the contact rate by which at which that's the rate at which the infected person contacts the other now this are this gamma is called the is called the recovery rate okay that means the rate at which people that are infected get uh, recovered okay now if you remember the the peak that i told you the peak is here okay so the the is equal to beta over gamma and it's also here the recovery rate and the contact rate are the same so that is why you will now say that when our o is equal to one the, the, the infection is not spreading when our o is more than one the, the, the epidemic is growing when RO is less than one, the epidemic is shrinking. This is the peak here. That is what determines the O. All right. So now we have to that RO is called the whole hundred percent of the population. But you know that in real life is not just hundred percent. All right. Okay. So. Number. The effect of the 
but then now it is saying that here if you get it if you get it can keep the section from to other people in sustain and that's what we have of the total population so you won't At which the origin is the only natural population that are susceptible. So, an human is only the Aruko and the uh, fraction of the population. So here, our n is number of those that are susceptible to the disease, and our m is what the total population. Okay. So if we want to get our n, we get our initial direction, and then we must multiply. We are multiplying by the what the the the, the, uh, the number of those. So that is it. And we know that our array is n the compact equivalent by W okay? and S over N is what we call our effective reproductive number. Okay, so it's good that we understand these basics. Alright? So Having understood how to define our RUO, the last and RUE, so how to define our RUE, RUO, the last thing we need to understand is how to define um, the force of infection. I think that's the last uh, formula before I will now introduce the, the, the term model. So, the force of infection. Is the speed at which the infection is moving. So let me revise what we did before. Kind of just to give a example. To calculate the number of people that suffer the infection, only one person, you have this formula B S over N. That's for one person. Okay. Now, for all that person is infected, yeah, but then if you want to know for all, so you will want to know how many people they infect. For all, how many people can they infect? Is B S over N times I. All right. So now, how do we get our force of infection? Our force of infection is just to take this B, this I, and take this N. That's all. So our force of infection is what? B, I, over N. So this force of infection. So this is what, so when, so when you hear, what determines the force of infection? The force of, the, the force of infection is determined by the contact rate, the number of people that are infected, and what? The total number of the population. All right. Okay. So, so if we substitute everything here with F, so we'll now see that if we want to know the number of people that are infected, that would be what? The number of people that are infected with what? This will now be if we change everything here to F. So, I mean, if we delete everything here now, so that, that will now be, that will now become. What F times I. Okay, so it's the force of infection here times the total number of people that. Sorry, that's the oh, let me see. So, what I said before, one infected person we, we infect BS over N number of people, right? All infected persons we infect BS over N times. The total number of infected. 
and I say that if you take your B and I N, so B I over N, that will give us what? That will give us our force of friction. Okay, so let me stop here to avoid bringing friction, but just know the formulas. So now, if you see, if you have a question, the force of compression is determined by three factors. Number one is what the contact rate is infected persons, the number of those that are infected, and the total uh, the total number of the population. That is what determines the force. The force is the speed at which at which infection goes. Alright, alright. So having defined all these parameters now, we now I will now explain what the, the SAR model is. So the SAR model is a model. Okay, so as it, it just to it just says that as people are being infected, as in, as, the, as the, those that are as people are being infected, those that are infected are also recovering or dying. Okay, so the rate at which the those that Is I told you before what B S over N times I. All right. Now the rate at which those uh, that are infected are recovering is what arrow times I. Okay. So why where arrow is the recovery rate? Okay, B is the contact rate, S is the number of those that are susceptible, and then I is the number of those that are infected. Okay, now, now if I want to uh, represent this equation, this whole stuff here, so you will see that in the star model, we always see something like this. Let me let me tell you something like this. We always see something like this. B B S over B T is equal to minus B S I. <laughs> okay. So I don't want to make this thing complicated. So what this thing actually means, D S over D T means it's telling you the rate of change. So it means that the number of those that are susceptible, okay. Will be decreasing with time. Remember that people will be infected now. So if the total population is like one thousand, okay, or let's say it's like hundred. Now, if one one person gets infected, it will remain ninety nine. If another person gets infected, it will remain uh, ninety eight. So it will be decreasing. So that's what this minus sign is telling you here. The rate at which the susceptible decreases is given by B S over B. Uh, minus b s i all right now if i don't want to state this thing like this you see if i, if I want to remove all this d s all this um d s over the t what i can say is that the number of susceptible tomorrow okay minus the number of susceptible today will be given by the formula you see that I told you here, B S over N times I. So you can see that if I'm using the S over the T, you can, you can see that I'm not putting this N. You see? So the N becomes irrelevant because the S over the T is just is telling me it is already the, the rate of change. But if I'm not a mathematical person, I don't want to be bringing in all these things. You're afraid of the S over the T. Please, Kukuma, use the, just use the the, the the simple equation. So this is tomorrow that is the number of successful successful for for tomorrow that's t plus one sorry the number of successful for tomorrow minus the number of successful for today how will I calculate it? That's what I'm asking. So I told you you will calculate it using this formula B S over N times 
i okay so this and this are similar they are just the same different ways of writing something okay so if you are good in mathematics you know you don't need the end your once you understand this one you know what it means that this is a fashion of the population you don't need the end here but they are all the same thing so you can kukuma you can just ignore this one and then uh, follow the, the mathematical one that i'm giving you okay so the rate of change for the the rate of change remember this is how it flows from from susceptible to infected to recall all right so the rate of change for the susceptible if i want to calculate the number of those that uh, uh that will be in, that will be infected okay i'll give the formula ds over n times i this formula will give me the number of persons that that are in, that are infected at, at any point in time if i want to calculate the, the number of persons that are recovering at any time i'll use this formula r i so r i is the recovery rate divided by sorry the recovery rate times what number of those that are infected so this is all you need to know i guess what i've shown you now is all you need to know this is the secret of cell model in simplified mathematics okay so now let me write it in let me write it if i want to know the rate of change i want to know how many will be infected at i equal to my n equal to i okay minus i equals to this as t will be what the rate of change what b s over n times i okay minus what gamma times i that would be what if i filter out this all this i here i will have b s over n minus gamma okay so so this so this with this formula will tell us how many people will be infected tomorrow all right so you can see like i told you before you can see here that 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 this is a like i told you bs bs over n is the rate of infection for one person all right and the rate of recovery so if the rate of recovery is smaller there will be what epidemic okay so if if this one is small as this one is the rate of infection everything now minus the, the rate of recovery so if it's smaller there will be what an epidemic so this is the formula for SAR model in simplified uh, terms in simplified terms so we're going to try to use these formulas to uh, at, attempt equation so one more thing. So for the recovery rate, that is the recovery of that would be. So let me put everything. So let's say you have a cancer, and they tell you that your cancer is zero point two. Okay, and gamma is uh, and gamma is uh gamma is uh zero point five how will you interpret something like this how will you interpret it so what this thing means is just add the words per day here yeah, add the words per day here yeah. so what this means is that what that on average okay an index case that is anyone that anyone that has the infection will come in contact with okay and 
affect 0 0.2 persons per day. That is how the impact is. The number of persons the an infected person will infect per day. Okay. How many persons we that's the number of persons we come in contact with and infect them? That's 0 0.2. Now, how do you interpret R? So this is for B. Now, how do you interpret R? You said R is 0 0.5 per day. No. R is 0 0.5. What does it mean? It means that on average, on average, an infected person will recover in 1 over 0 0.5 days. So 1 over 0 0.5 is what? 1 divided by 1 over 2. That would be what? In 2 days. You can see. So you can see. So if we invert R, if we invert R, that's the term of invert R, you will get the number of days it will take for somebody to recover. Okay? So that is how to interpret it. So if you don't know how to interpret the meaning to interpret the meanings of all these things, you will you will have a long way to go. Okay, so that's why it's, it's important to to you know understand the meaning of what you are trying to interpret. Okay, so in summary, in summary. The formulas that we have learned today is that we need to have rigidity and capacity. All right, that is the first thing that we learned. So we have learned that we need to keep here our root rule is equal to one because there is balance. So the rigidity cannot be and our open is equal to what? Theta over gamma. Okay, so the in the contact rate is is equal to the uh, recovery rate. So the equation cannot it has due to an equilibrium. It, it, it has run, run out, out of the number of people. It has run it has run out of uh susceptible that it can affect. That's what we learned. Number two, we learned. One person, one affected person can infect B S over N number of persons. That's for one person. Okay, and then for many affected persons, the number of people that they can they can affect is given by what? B S over N times I. Where I is in the internal of the person. And we say that B is the what contact rate. Okay, the rate at which infected people contact new members. And S is the number of susceptible persons. N is what? The number of the total number of recopulation. I is the total number of infected persons. So these are the important formulas we have to learn. Then we learned that the um Stop the infection. Take this B and I and N only. You will get the force of infection. So that's what we learned. B I over N. So that this is the force of infection. Okay. Then we learned the effect of the transmission model. The rate of change. For us to know how to change the transmission, B plus 1 minus over the number of persons. So we can't use the rate, we must use the formula. So we said that it should be what? We come back here again. We say B S over N times I. That's the number of people that are affected to. Minus 
minus recovery rate times multiplying factors. So this is a formula. This is a, this is a model. By the way, of understanding this. Okay. So this so this formula, and then if you filter out the i, you, you leave the remainder in the bracket. You have vx of n, and then you have what you have. So this is the SA model. This this equation, without putting on all those derivatives and all those things, this is the best equation. All right. So we now begin the next step of the SA model. So what are these assumptions? The assumptions is that one, it is saying we are assuming that every plane has a certain susceptible, which is not true in real life. In real life, some people who will not okay. So the star model is that we have a flow. And these are the two majority points. This has been a solution. That means that the input is constant, the first rate and the rate are constant. So it's assuming that they are constant. And we should know that in reality, sometimes other things can happen. Okay. So because of that, so and that is this two are the same, the same that is why the sum model is in the case of COVID-19. Okay, so number three is also assuming a constant recovery rate. That means that everybody recovers at a particular period. Which which you know that even in COVID-19, these three things are not true. Okay? It, uh, it, people recover at different rates. Right? Even then um and then so if I extend this, it also is also assuming that assuming that we apply all the necessary conditions, the rates of uh, decrease. You know, those are the things that are very close to it's assuming that poor and then the rate of of which we know that people at the moment we we expect because we are doing this regulation we also the recovery. So it doesn't take into account behavioral changes and cultural changes in the society that can affect um, the the rate at which some country will recover. Okay, so so those are the the the, the assumptions and the weakness of the SAM model. So there are other models to extend the SAM model, but the most important one is for you to have a clear understanding. Of where we are, all right? Okay. Okay. So let, let me see whether we can attempt some um questions, some questions on the SAR model. Let me see whether we can get some questions on the SAR model and attempt. All right. So the first question says. In the SI to the next model, the spin factor value of the number of cases is the contact and transmission rates, which is different. So he said, name the two quantities that control the contact and transmission rate. So the answer is in this formula here. So th that's the rate of change. Because I told you there are two ways you can write all the formulas. Once you write it using the, the differential, you remove the n. All right. So this formula is the same as what. B S over N dot I. Okay, that's if you don't want to use all this differential. If you want to write like uh tomorrow's uh minus today, okay. The equal to B S over N. So based on this formula alone, you you can see the answer. The answer here is the what the S and I. Okay, so that's the number of susceptible. And number of infected, okay. Number of susceptible and number of infected. So total number of susceptible 
and number of infected infected persons. All right, so this is a copy from the north, from the north, from the top. All right, now name the additional structure that is needed to model the number of in a community at a particular time. So name the additional structure. So if we remember our equation, the additional structure is when you have your D, your S, and the D, S, I over N, the additional structure should be the total number of the population. So that is three, three, nine, ten. The total, total number of the population. Total number of the population. Okay. Now, in the star epidemic model, it is not generally purpose for an entire community to become infected due to, due to some members of the population recovering concurrently or the same day. Okay. So that means some people, some people are recovering while right? others are also infected. So, what is the key point is the objective proportion of the community that may eventually become infected? So, if you remember what we did about Aru, so Aru is saying that he's saying Aru is saying that in the entire population, does it mean hundred percent? Is susceptible, right? And but in reality, it's not true. So, are you saying that the part of this population is true? So, that's are you is what are you times S over N? So, once you know, know the formula, you go to so S is the number of those that are susceptible and N is the total population. So, the key point here is what the effective reproduction. So that's one. Effective reproduction number. Alright. So, yeah, so that is the answer. This is not the answer. This, that's the answer. Okay. Now, besides the quantity named in C above. Which additional quantity is needed in the star model to calculate the number of infected to be affected in a community at a particular time? That means besides this, remember that besides this key now, which other, uh, which other quantity is needed in the star model to calculate the number of Expected in a particular time. So, and we said from our formula, we said that it should be number number of As number of cases for one person multiplied on by all that of all persons that are at the then minus gamma and i at the okay so now this question is saying apart from R E as a as effective reproduction number what other thing do we need? Okay, and we say that our RU E, yes, so our RU E given by RU O times SN. And if you remember, we say that our RU O is also equal to what? Beta over gamma, right? That's this RU O. Okay, so our RU O, so our RU O. Is equal to beta over gamma. Okay, 
So, and this is an equation for the SAR model. This one. Okay, so now we have our ROE already as ROO as ROO times SM as ROE. Then we have our SAR model. So, which additional quantity is needed in the SAR model to calculate the number of positive the expected in a community at a particular time at a particular time at a particular time what else again is needed what else again is needed so at a particular time so this is giving us the number of this is giving us the number of people that are infected at a particular time while this is giving us the number of people that are recovered that, that are recovering at a particular time so what is it that we have not mentioned that should be what our recovery rate our recovery rate that is this ROI so can you see that this equation here, this this whole equation I wrote now, is the same as this one. Okay, it's just that the, the that the n is not written, and then so whenever you see the s to uh, uh, over the t, that's uh, the i over the dt. Okay, in mathematics, that is the rate of change. So what they actually mean is something like this. So have it in your brain. That's the meaning. So if you're using the S over the T, you don't need to put in a fraction. But we all know that is a fraction. So what we are, the, what we need here is what else is needed. It should be, we should be what that we want to. What else is needed here is what the rate of recovery, rate of recovery. Okay, so don't mind me that I'm deleting all these answers. I was trying to pull out the answers from the notes when I was preparing for this. Okay, so these are all from the PowerPoint, so I'm going to delete all of them. So what I what we need here is what we need our we need our gamma. We need our gamma. We need our recovery rates. What quantity? We need our recovery rate. And that recovery rate is given by what? Gamma times i. Because we have to minus it. This one. The amount of people affected. Okay? Now, assume for a particular disease that the infectious period is two days. Now, if you remember what this is, how do we how do we understand this? That it means that after after eight um infectious infectious period is eight days, so and the recovery rate is zero point zero five. Recovery rate then is gamma is zero point zero five. And how do we interpret this gamma? It means that what after after one over zero point zero five days, the the person will recover. So one over zero point zero five. That is what one over um zero point zero five is uh, five over hundred maybe. Yeah. So if I invert it, that'll be hundred over five. So that'll be what twenty days. Okay. So that means the person will cover after twenty days. That's that's what what I'm what that's what I'm saying here. Okay. So and at particular time there are hundred infected in a community infected how many people will be expected to recover look at our formula here recovery is here at time i so in how do i allot my time i that be what 0 0.05 times 1000 0 0.05 
times 1000. So that will give us what? 500. Have it? 1, 2. 1, 2. Okay, that will give us. 1, 2, 1, 2. So that will give us um, 50. So the questions will be expected to, to recover. Now, give one reason why the fundamental uh, assumptions in the exam model are imperfect. So, I've already given you the answer already now. So, for COVID 19, so one is that we know that COVID 19 it doesn't have a constant exchange rate. Number two, um, um, COVID 19, um, somebody is assuming a closed population. So, that means that the birth rate and death rate are constant, and we know that that is not true. Okay. Number three, number three, uh, in flattening the curve, the, people, the level of compliance of people uh, and of people's behavior determined can also affect that. So, so we, we you cannot assume that the the rate of um uh, of recovery will be will be constant because people it can be affected by what people's behavior and adherence to the restrictions. Okay. So I think um I've done by the grace by the, by the grace of God I've done justice to this topic today. It was a long video. Try and rewatch it and then if you have any questions please ask me in the group. Ask me in the group, okay? All right. So um in other videos. All right. Okay, so God bless you. And thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. So do well to follow me on my LinkedIn. Just type in my name and you'll see me there. Okay, thank you so much and God bless you.